Hey everyone, Renee from Tippy.com here, and today we are looking at the Apple TV 2010, the second hardware revision. Um, a quick little hardware tour. So you have your Apple TV logo on here, um, and this thing is tiny. Let me just pull back so you can see it in my hand. I mean, it is, compared to the old Apple TV, this thing went on some heck of a crash diet. It's got the power source built in now, so you don't have to have a brick. It is all inbound, which means that even though this thing is tiny, it actually is tinier because most of this is taken up by the big power brick uh, that used to be external. You have the HDMI cable right there. Underneath is the micro USB, which is used for service, but eventually might be used for other stuff like <coughs> Xcode, uh, iTunes, let's see, optical audio and HDMI. And then here you have the network uh, connection to take it over Ethernet uh, if you so choose. I usually do go over Ethernet because if it's not a portable device, I don't really need it to be portable. On the bottom, it looks very much like the new Mac Mini and it's apparently quite um, serviceable. So kudos to Apple on that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It is literally a little black box of iOS goodness. So if we zip into the menu here, one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, it's changed a little bit. First of all, I don't have TV shows because I am in Canada and we filthy Canadians are not entitled to even the meager ABC and partial Fox content that Americans are getting, but I'm not bitter. Anyway, you can see if you used an Apple TV, uh, the original one, you can see the menu structure has changed slightly. Previously, you would have movies and then my movies uh, as well as top movies, genres only, iTunes content. Now, the movies tab and presumably the TV tab in the US is just completely iTunes centric. It is just for renting movies and in this case watching movie trailers. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. So top movies of course is whatever people are renting the most of in iTunes. And even though the Apple TV 2, uh, the 2010 version is running iOS, it's running low tide, this interface that looks almost exactly like the previous generation Apple TV and nothing like the springboard home screen interface in the iPhone or iPad. I always go to the animation because I think you can tell better quality uh, on animation than you can sometimes on live action stuff. You get information about it, you can put it on your wish list, uh, you can get more including now, uh, you know, actor information, what else they've been in consumer reviews. Um, there is supposed to be Rotten Tomatoes here somewhere, but I haven't come across it yet, so that might also be a US-centric feature, although that would make no sense because the interwebs are international. Uh, if you want to rent a movie like I rented this one already, you uh, just hit the rent button, put in your iTunes password, and it took literally two seconds for it to be available to me, and this is high def, which was fairly impressive. Um, and here you can see it's loading and it's authorizing to make sure I'm not a criminal. Thanks again, Hollywood. I'm here to sightsee or fight. And here we can see, I mean, it's pretty good quality. I'm 720p, this is a 1080p Sony uh, XBR television, and it, it looks great. We're sitting around, you know, six, seven feet away from it, and I, I couldn't tell the difference between 1080p at this level. And even the reds, the colors, the ones that usually cause problems on compression. Um, they look really good. There's no blood. The internet is where you get Netflix. So here's your Netflix content. I'm on the trial membership, but it will be $8 a month in Canada to stream movies, and I believe the U.S. will be getting the same deal. So it's TV shows and movies. The selection is a mixed bag of hurt, and it's sometimes older content, but for $8, bucks, um, it's a viable option for many people. Again, I default to animation because... Again, I default to animation because I believe it is a better indicator of quality. And it's fairly snappy. Ah, it's just, they're a little different than 
fighting robots. Uh-oh. And it looks great for, for Netflix content. I was expecting much worse. There's no HD label, but um, again, this is a 1080p TV set, and I don't see any artifacting. I don't see, when I look at diagonal lines, I don't see a lot of staircasing. I do see some banding, uh, especially in the contiguous color regions. You can see that through the gradients. Um, but that's not too bad for, for streaming internet content. So let's back out of here before I, you know, pass eight seconds and get sued. You have your movie genres. And this is a great interface. I actually like this interface far, far, far more than the crappy website that's supposed to be an app on the iPad. Uh, the iPhone one isn't so bad, but on the iPad, it really annoys me. So I like this way more. I hope they just make an app like this for the iPad. Please uh, let Apple make your, your app for you, Netflix. You have your YouTubes, of course. Even though uh, Steve Jobs said that they didn't want Amateur Hour, Amateur Hour still gets equal billing with the Hollywood content. So you can see whatever Netflix, sorry, whatever uh, YouTube wants you to see. You have most viewed, recent, top rated. Uh, you can search. Now, if you have the remote control, like I'm using right now, the one that uh, comes with it, it is fairly onerous to type with. Um, but just in case you don't have an iPhone or an iPad, uh, shame on you, but um, you can see that you know it's, it's not too bad to go through and you can find videos fairly quickly. And typing in COD to see all your Call of Duty videos, well, that's pretty fast. And you have internet radio. Um, so you can find whatever stations uh, you have a hankering for. Computers. Um, you set them up with home sharing in iTunes. It's very easy, much easier than the Apple TV first generation when you had to put in codes and whatnot. And it will pull it up. So like I said, the interface is different. You don't have your content mixed in with the iTunes content. Where So if you're a content-centric person, you just want to see movies regardless of whether you own them or you have to rent them from iTunes, uh, this will irk you. But if you want to ignore that iTunes exists and only use the Apple TV for streaming from your home library, this is fantastic because once you're in here, you never have to look at iTunes again. Uh, you'll just see whatever you happen to have uh, queued up at the time. And it's uh, fairly quick and fairly snappy and we'll take a look at a movie this way. So again, let's fight! So this is streaming off a of Mac Pro. This is an iTunes video. So I'm guessing it was originally 720p-ish, and uh, it's on a network cable because I, it's not a portable device, so I don't feel any need to have it on Wi-Fi. But it it looks fine. There is no charge for awesomeness or attractiveness. And again, no lag, no stream, no jagged lines, being upscaled perfectly well uh, by the television set. Uh, so if you have a good quality chipset in your TV, you shouldn't have any problems. We have over here the settings tab. So general, gives you all sorts of things. Network, iTunes store, if you want it to store your password or not. Uh, setting up your remotes, software updates. This is interesting because this is an iOS device and it's going to be updated directly over the internet to the device. No plugging into iTunes needed. So I really hope I really hope iPhone and um, iPad get an option similar to that. It's not to be the only way, but the option would be nice. Sleep, send data to Apple, uh, it's up to you. Reset the device. Give your screen saver choices. Everybody's new favorites. Audio and video settings. And closed captioning, subtitles. Apple is continuing to do a very good job at supporting accessibility, so I want to once again give kudos to Apple on that. Uh, AirPlay is working only for audio right now. You can stream the audio from your iPad if you're running 
4.2 beta to the Apple TV, but it's not accepting video right now. So that is a quick look at the all new 2010 Apple TV and we will have more on tippy.com. So check us out there and our new Apple TV forum on forum.tippy.com. We'd love to hear from you.